This program is supported by Protect Plus Gold, a broad spectrum disinfectant, kills 99.5% of disease causing germs and works in 10 minutes. Hello, I'm Alma Angeles, and you're watching Eagle News International. Hello, CJ. Hello, Alma, and good evening to everyone joining the broadcast. Here are tonight's headlines. A total of 47 Delta variant cases have been recorded in nine cities in the national capital region, according to the Department of Health. China tightened overseas travel restrictions for its citizens as part of efforts to contain rising coronavirus cases after reporting its highest number of infections in months. And U.S. President Joe Biden joins leading Democrats in calling on powerful New York Governor Andrew Cuomo to resign after an independent investigation concluded that he sexually harassed multiple women. And the Defense Department said a police officer killed at the Pentagon's mass transit terminal in an incident that forced the lockdown of the U.S. military headquarters. First, a total of 47 Delta variant cases have been recorded in nine cities in the national capital region, according to the Department of Health. In a message to reporters, the DOH noted that Caloocan has four Delta variant cases, Las Piñas 14, Makati 3, Malabon 4, Mandaluyong 2, Pasig 6, San Juan 2, Valenzuela 1, and Manila 11. Now, this data is vetted by the Epidemiology Bureau, according to the DOH. On Tuesday, Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere said nine out of 17 local government units in NCR have at least one patient infected with the Delta variant of coronavirus as of August 1. The DOH flagged the NCR Central Visayas, Ilocos Region, Cagayan Valley, Cordillera Administrative Region, and Northern Mindanao for having a high risk classification based on its moderate two-week growth rate and high-risk average daily attack rate. And so far, the country's total number of Delta cases is 216. 165 are local cases, 48 are returning overseas Filipinos, while three are undergoing verification to determine if these are local cases or ROFs. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte welcomed the arrival of 3,060,000 doses of Moderna vaccine donated by the United States government through the COVAX facility. President Duterte recognized in his speech the generosity of the U.S. Take a look. It is with joy and I hope we welcome today the arrival of more than 3 million doses of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines from the United States of America. I wish to thank the United States for the generos generosity in sharing various COVID-19 assistance to the Philippines. I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to the COVAX facility for the continuous donation of these vaccines. We look forward to the delivery of even more life-saving vaccines in the country very soon. I know that it is the sentiment of uh, America that the vaccines that should be given to the Philippines should go first to those who have least in life. Yung mga mahirap, the poor ones who cannot afford, rest assured that this administration will continue to obtain safe and effective vaccines for everyone. The latest batch of donation, which followed the 3,240,850 Johnson & Johnson's Janssen vaccines from the U.S. government, 
arrived at the Villamore Air Base in Pasay City past 4 p.m. The month uh, for the month of August, the Philippines is expecting 22.7 million vaccine doses from those procured by the government and the donations from the United States, United Kingdom, China, and COVAX. To date, more than 21.2 million doses have been administered in the country. To China now, where the country tightened overseas travel restrictions for its citizens as part of efforts to contain the rising coronavirus cases after reporting its highest number of infections in months. The movement of people is coming under more restriction inside China, with localized transport closures and stay-at-home orders in places in some cities and beyond China's borders. China's immigration authority today announced it would stop issuing passports and and other documents needed for exiting the country in non-essential and non-emergency cases. And that doesn't yet mean an overseas travel ban for the Chinese public. Foreign crew on hundreds of ships have also been stopped from disembarking and changing shifts at Chinese ports. The central government has also ordered localities to cut off public transport and taxis in and out of areas hit by the outbreak, according to the Transport Ministry at the same at a press conference. The latest outbreak is threatening the country's return to normal life and an economic rebound with nearly 500 domestic cases reported since mid-July. Meanwhile, Macau ordered compulsory coronavirus testing for all residents on Wednesday after a family of four was found to be carrying the Delta variant, breaking the city's record of over 16 months virus free take a look authorities are investigating whether the daughter of the family contracted the virus on a flight from Zhuhai to Jian uh, in mainland China in July Macau's leader Ho Yat-seng said today the same flight carried two other infected people from Nanjing the center of a Delta variant outbreak in China that has led to more than 300 new cases across 15 provinces and cities in two weeks. Macau has kept infections low by closing itself off from the rest of the world for much of the pandemic and placing restrictions on arrivals from mainland China. It has recorded only 60 cases and no deaths. But the zero COVID strategy has come with deep economic costs. The city ordered a shutdown of all casinos for two weeks when the virus was first detected last year, causing a loss of $937 million, according to an estimate by the University of Macau. Meanwhile, Vietnam's capital city, Hanoi, has begun a large vaccination drive since last week, which will last until April 2022, with AstraZeneca, Moderna, and Pfizer COVID vaccines being used. Take a look. Thực ra trước khi đến đây thì cũng rất lo lắng vì đến cũng sợ là lây nhiễm nhưng mà khi đến đây thì thấy là các biện pháp cách ly rồi phòng dịch cũng rất là 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 chú đáo và cũng cẩn thận nên là đến bây giờ thì thực ra mình cũng thấy đã khá là yên tâm. Mình nghĩ là khi mà tiêm vaccine rồi thì mình sẽ cảm thấy an tâm hơn cho bản thân mình thôi. Còn rất nhiều người khác cũng chưa được tiêm nên là cái dịch bệnh nó vẫn còn rất là căng thẳng và và phức tạp. Nên là vẫn là mọi người vẫn nên tích cực để phòng tránh, tuân theo 5K của Bộ Y tế. Tất nhiên là chặt chẽ và vất vả hơn rất nhiều rồi bạn. Mình bọn tôi tiêm từ 7 giờ sáng cho đến 6 giờ chiều. À, thời tiết nắng nóng như là biết rồi đấy, rất là vất vả. 5.1 million residents of Hanoi between the age of 18 to 65, along with people in other age groups, will be vaccinated, according to state media. The country has been slow to procure and administer vaccines, with nearly 7 million doses administered among its 100 million people as cases soar, and more than 1,600 deaths have been recorded. More than a third of the population were forced to stay home, with the lockdown being extended in the commercial hub of Ho Chi Minh City and 18 other southern cities and provinces as the country battles an outbreak that began in April in two northern industrial provinces, which has since spread south. 
In other news, fully vaccinated people in England were one-third as likely to test positive for COVID-19, according to an ongoing survey of the population released today. The latest findings from a long-running study by scientists at Imperial College London and market research company Ipsos Mori were based on 98,233 swabs taken between June 24 and July 12. The study also found double vaccinated people may be less likely to pass on the virus to other humans or other than those who have not received a vaccine. Paul Elliott, a professor at Imperial School of Public Health and uh, director of the survey program, said the findings confirm our previous data showing that uh, both doses of a vaccine offer good protection against getting infected. However, officials and scientists in Britain have urged caution after the government eased all virus curbs in England on July 19, including the legal requirement to wear masks in certain indoor settings. A U.S. government document leaked last week warned that infections among fully vaccinated people are not as rare as previously thought and that such cases are highly contagious. Now, New York announced the introduction of a de facto vaccine pass for some public places. New York City will require proof of vaccination for people attending indoor venues such as restaurants, gyms, and shows, according to Mayor Bill de Blasio, making it the first major U.S. city to introduce a vaccine pass. Take a look. So today I announce a new approach, which we're calling the key to NYC pass, the key to New York City. When you hear those words, I want you to imagine the notion that because someone's vaccinated, they can do all the amazing things that are available in this city. And if you're vaccinated, all that's gonna open up to you. You'll have the key, you can open the door. But if you're unvaccinated, unfortunately, you will not be able to participate in many things. That's the point we're trying to get across. This is gonna be a requirement. The only way to patronize these establishments indoors will be if you're vaccinated, at least one dose. The same for folks in terms of work. They'll need at least one dose. With coronavirus cases again surging in the U.S., de Blasio said the policy dubbed the key to NYC would be launched on August 16, followed by a transition period before enforcement a month later. In recent weeks, the mayor and the governor of New York State, Andrew Cuomo, have issued regulations tightening vaccination rules as the United States struggles to suppress the Delta variant. New York State will require all public-facing health care workers to get vaccinated from September and all of the state's tens of thousands of employees to show proof of vaccination or face weekly tests. In New York, a city of more than 8 million inhabitants, 71.8% of adults have received at least one dose of vaccine, that according to official figures. Meanwhile, in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis rejected any new restrictions. He spoke in Miami after news that hospitalizations in the state hit a record for the third straight day. Take a look. In terms of shutting down, we're not shutting down. Uh, we're going to have schools open. We're protecting every Floridian's job in this state. We're protecting people's small businesses. Uh, these interventions have failed time and time again throughout this pandemic, not just in the United States, but abroad. They have not stopped the spread. I think it's important to point out because, you know, obviously media does hysteria. You try to fear monger, you try to do this stuff. And when they'll talk about hospitalizations, our hospitals are open for business. Like I said, Jackson, the COVID patients are half of what they were last year. President Joe Biden, meanwhile, continued to urge Americans to get COVID-19 vaccines and use masks. He tells governors refusing to or opposing the use of masks to, quote, please help, but if you aren't going to help, at least get out of the way of people who are trying to do the right thing. Under pressure from progressive Democrats, U.S. health authorities declared a new moratorium on tenant 
evictions until October in much of the country, citing public health risks posed by the COVID-19 pandemic and the Delta variant. The emergence of the Delta variant has led to a rapid acceleration of community transmission in the U.S., putting more Americans at increased risk, especially if they are unvaccinated. According to Rochelle Walensky, director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, in a statement. Now, the moratorium applies to countries experiencing substantial and high levels, or counties rather, of uh, high levels of community uh, transmission of COVID-19, according to the CDC statement, and is set to expire on October 3. Although likely to be challenged in court, the measure will allow tenants extra time to access funds previously issued by Congress to help people pay rent, according to President Joe Biden uh, in a White House statement. A previous moratorium put in place in September last year by the CDC expired after a Supreme Court ruling in June stipulated that it could not continue beyond July 31st without authorization from Congress. In other news, toy giant Mattel said Wednesday it hoped to inspire the next generation after creating a model of its iconic Barbie doll in honor of Sarah Gilbert, co-creator of the Oxford AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine. And I'm very proud of the work that the team... It's a very strange concept to have a Barbie dog uh, created in my likeness. Um, I hope it will be part of making it more normal for girls to think about careers in science. Although, to be honest, when I was a young girl, I never believed that I wouldn't have a career in science. Well, I hope that uh, my Barbie doll, as well as others of women who work in science and medicine, will just keep reminding them that there are many careers open to them. So when they're playing, they're also thinking about what they might like to do in the future. It is important to encourage women to take up careers in STEM subjects. Actually, in biological sciences, many women do go to university and study that area, and it's only at the very higher levels of the, the profession that we tend to have a dominance of males, and that's something that I want to see changing in the next few years. The toy company created models in honor of five other women in the sciences, U.S. healthcare workers, Amy O'Sullivan, and Audrey Cruz, Canadian campaigner Chica Stacy Oriua, Brazilian researcher Jacqueline Goez de Jesus, and Australian medic Kirby White. Barbie recognizes that all frontline workers have made tremendous sacrifices when confronting the pandemic and the challenges it heightened, said Lisa McKnight, senior vice president of Barbie and Dolls at Mattel. To shine a light on their efforts, we are sharing their stories and lever leveraging Barbie's platform to inspire the next generation to take after these heroes and give back, she said. Our hope is to nurture and ignite the imaginations of children playing out their own storyline as heroes. And the news continues here on Eagle News. CJ and I will be back right after this break. This portion is brought to you by North Luzon Express Terminal. Mula noon hanggang ngayon, gabay natin ang MTRCB ratings sa matalino at responsabling panonood. Sa tamang pagsunod sa MTRCB ratings, ginagawa nating ligtas at makabuluhan ang panonood ng bawat miyembro ng Pamilyang Pilipino. Lumipas man ang panahon hanggang may Pamilyang Pilipino, andyan ang MTRCB. Para ka kumita, eh, 
sisipagan mo, tapos konting kapitalo, magpo-pondo ka para meron kang hanguin o meron kang makuha pagdating ng oras. Mga six months, three months, pabalik na yung punan mo. Kesa sa itapon, no? kailangan natin siyang i-recycle para mapakinabangan. Iba't ibang sangkap ay lutuin. Kutahing di kaya ibutin. Ako po, si Robin Padilla, at ito po ang ulag, Kaagapay sa Hanap Buhay. Kaagapay sa Hanap Buhay. Kada umaga, sa harap ng umaga, pagkakasama, kada umaga. Welcome back. Two people died and dozens more were injured when two trains collided at a village in the west of the Czech Republic, according to police. The police said the accident happened shortly after 8 a.m. local time at Milavice. A spokesperson said at the moment, 31 people whose lives are not in danger are being treated. Seven people are in a critical state and two are dead. The Munich to Prague train number X or EX351 collided with a regional service between the Czech towns of Plzen and Domas Liche. Czech Transport Minister Karel Navlicek said the EX351 did not respect a signal and it crashed into the regional train. The two trains or the trains uh, crashed in the Czech Republic in July. Two trains crashes. Two train crashes in the Czech Republic in July last year left three people dead and dozens injured. The Defense Department said a police officer was stabbed to the death at the Pentagon's mass transit terminal in an incident that forced the lockdown of the U.S. military headquarters. Employees in the Pentagon building in Arlington, a suburb of Washington, were ordered to shelter in place for more than an hour after gunfire erupted in the bus and subway station just yards from the entrance. Officials said the site was secured 90 minutes after the incident. Subway services were temporarily suspended and buses headed to the station were diverted to other stops. Officers shot and killed the suspect at the scene. He was identified as 27-year-old Austin Lance of Georgia, and there was no word on a possible motive. Staying in the U.S., the Attorney General accuses New York Governor Andrew Cuomo of sexually harassing multiple women. It has also sparked a cascade of call for his resignation, including from President Biden himself, and expedited an impeachment investigation. Let's take a, let's take a look. The independent investigation has concluded that Governor Andrew Cuomo sexually harassed multiple women and in doing so violated federal and state law. Specifically, the investigation found that Governor Andrew Cuomo sexually harassed current and former New York State employees by engaging in unwelcome and non-consensual touching and making numerous offensive comments of a suggestive and sexual nature that created a hostile work environment for women. Will you now call on him to resign given the investigator said the 11 women were credible? I stand by that statement. Are you now calling on him to resign? Yes. And if he doesn't resign, do you believe he should be impeached and removed from office? Let's take one thing at a time here. I think he should resign. I understand that the state legislature may decide to impeach. I don't know that for a fact. I've not read all that data. I want you to know directly from me that I never touched anyone inappropriately 
or made inappropriate sexual advances. I am 63 years old. I have lived my entire adult life in public view. That is just not who I am. I do banter with people. I do tell jokes, some better than others. I am the same person in public as I am in private. I now understand that there are generational or cultural perspectives that, frankly, I hadn't fully appreciated. And I have learned from this. Now, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the three-term governor should step down and state lawmakers moved to impeach him. The explosive report detailed allegations by 11 women that paint a deeply disturbing yet clear picture of a pattern of abusive behavior by Governor Cuomo and his senior staff, according to State Attorney General Letitia James, announcing the findings. And it wasn't clear if the governor would face criminal prosecution, with uh, James saying the investigation was civil in nature. But U.S. media reported that the district attorney's office in state capital Albany had opened an investigation. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations appointed an envoy to Myanmar after a month-long delay in diplomatic efforts to resolve the coup-hit country's political crisis. In uh, or ASEAN's foreign minister said in a joint statement delayed by internal wrangling that they welcomed the appointment of Brunei, second foreign minister, Erewhon Yusof, as the bloc special envoy. ASEAN, which operates on a premise of consensus and non-interference, has been under global pressure to help resolve the crisis. Junta Chief Min Ong Dang attended an ASEAN meeting in April that led to a consensus statement that called for an immediate end to violence and a regional special envoy. ASEAN's joint communique said the envoy's task will include building trust and confidence and he will have full access to all parties concerned. Yusof has already made one trip to Myanmar for ASEAN since the coup on June 4, where he met with Min Ong Lang. The appointment of an envoy is expected to clear the way for ASEAN to send emergency aid to help authorities cope with a severe COVID-19 outbreak. Roaring blazes encircle the Turkish thermal power plant today and force farmers to herd panic cattle towards the sea as the wildfires that have killed eight people now rage for a seventh day. The nation of 84 million has been transfixed in horror as the most destructive wildfires in generations erase pristine forests and rich farmland across swathes of Turkey's Mediterranean and Aegean coasts. Tourists have been forced to escape on boats for safety and dozens of villages have been evacuated as wild winds and soaring heat fan the flames. Temperatures higher than 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit across the south of Turkey have set off a record surge in electricity use that caused power outages Monday in cities such as Ankara and Istanbul. Now residents on the outskirts of Athens are left to grapple with the devastating cost or devastation caused by forest fires. While firefighters say they are bringing the situation under control, Greek Prime Minister Korikos Mitsotakis promises that the damage will be repaired, but warns of further challenges ahead. Take a look. Θα ξεκινήσει άμεσα η δουλειά τη καταγραφή των ζημιών. Τα σπίτια θα ξανακαθούν. Το δάσο με τον χρόνο θα ξαναγίνει. Όμω τα δύσκολα είναι ακόμα μπροστά μα. Έχουμε κάποιε μέρε ακόμα κάψωνα. Μετά θα αρχίσουν οι άνεμοι. Οπότε θα ζητήσω από όλε και από όλου να παραμείνουμε σε απόλυτη εγρήγορση. Έτσι. With the country reeling under a severe heat wave. The blaze spread at the foot of a Mount of Parnip, sending thick smoke over the capital. Local media reported dozens of children had been rescued from a holiday camp near the Athens suburb of Varipompi. 
Experts have warned that climate change is increasing both the frequency and intensity of the wildfires. Several other blazes were still raging today in Greece, notably in the southern Peloponnese region, 300 kilometers from the capital. Three villages were evacuated after a fire started yesterday afternoon. Now, in south and central Albania, a heat wave sparked dozens of forest fires over the last week, where the first death reported today. Take a look. Now, a 64-year-old man died and his wife was seriously injured when they were trapped by a forest fire around their home in the southern region of Girokastra near the Greek border, according to police. Police and soldiers in the region began evacuating three villages there. And at least 500 soldiers, firefighters, and three helicopters were fighting fires in the southern Albanian region of Vlora. In other news, several lightning bolts hit a Bangladesh wedding party within a few seconds today, killing 16 people and injuring the groom, according to officials. The group had just left a boat at the riverside town of Shibganj to take shelter from the thunderstorm when the lightning struck, a government administrator for the town said. The bride was not with the wedding party, Sakib Al-Rabi told AFP, confirming 16 people died as several bolts struck within a few seconds of each other in the western district of uh, Chapainawagod. Fears the monsoon storms have uh, battered Bangladesh. A week of torrential rains in the southeastern district of Cox's Bazar left some 20 dead, including six Rohingya refugees. Lightning kills hundreds of people in the South Asian nation each year. Legal News will be back with more stories. So cool. Protect yourself and loved ones. Use Protect Plus Gold, a broad-spectrum disinfectant that kills 500 strains of bacteria, fungi, and viruses such as coronavirus and other disease-causing microorganisms. Also potent against viruses in pets. It kills 99.9% .9 of disease-causing germs and works in 10 minutes. Dissolve one teaspoon in one liter of water. Apply on areas for disinfection or use it for misting. Protect Plus Gold. Events happen around us all the time, in our community, in our country, around the world. Events that affect people, move communities, or simply inspire us. Interesting events that people need to know in these interesting times. We continue to be a competent partner in delivering news about these events. Fast, accurate, balanced. Eagle News, because we live in interesting times. Innovation, digital disruption, globalization, startups, micro, small, and medium enterprises, as well as large corporations, all face interesting challenges in the market today. Speak into the world of exciting opportunities and partnerships to drive growth with the latest business news and information. We are open for business. Your weekly dose of entrepreneurial inspiration to update you on the latest developments in the world of business. Get up close and personal with CEOs and thought leaders to help you discover valuable insights Sharpen your instincts for smart decision-making with the latest markets and economic trends. Disruptive ideas, global innovation, social entrepreneurship, and other leading-edge business ideas. Join the conversations to create a more vibrant environment for entrepreneurship. Catch Open for Business from Vision to Action. Hey there, Arnie Aquino here at Hatley Castle, one of the filming locations for the X-Men series. Don't forget to tune in to Digital Nest only on Net25.
Welcome back. The Philippines and Singapore are the only countries in ASEAN that recorded improvement in manufacturing index for July this year. That according to the IHS Market Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI. Now, due to the resurgence of COVID-19 in the region, the manufacturing score of ASEAN fell to its 13-month low to 44.6. PMI measures the health of the manufacturing sector with scores above 50, reflecting improvement while below the neutral score means deterioration. Of the seven ASEAN countries monitored by the IHS market, Singapore recorded the biggest improvement of 56.3. The Philippines' manufacturing score, meanwhile, last month settled at 50.4, slightly lower than June 2021's 50.8 index. On the other hand, manufacturing indices of Myanmar fell to 33.5, Indonesia to 40.1, Malaysia to 40.1, Vietnam to 45.1, and Thailand to 48.7. These countries have been experiencing an increase in COVID cases amid the spread of the more infectious Delta variant. Meanwhile, Sony upgraded its full-year profit forecast on the back of a strong quarterly performance, although the pandemic boom enjoyed by the gaming sector is slowing. The Japanese conglomerate said solid earnings in its music and consumer electronic businesses offset a first-quarter operating profit decline in the gaming sector. A box office triumph for the anime epic Demon Slayer distributed by Sony's animation unit, Aniplex, also boosted its better-than-expected quarterly results. Sony Group now predicts a net profit of 700 billion yen or $6.4 billion for the fiscal year to March 2022, up from its earlier estimate of 660 billion yen. Now, Microsoft said starting in September, anyone entering its buildings must be vaccinated. That is according to a CNBC report. And the move comes a week after U.S. government agencies and other technology companies said they will require vaccinations for workers. Microsoft said its U.S. facilities will have a full reopening no earlier than October 4. The previous plan was to reopen on September 7. The facilities closed in March last year. Toyota's net profit soared more than fivefold in the first quarter as strong sales were fueled by the recovery from the coronavirus crisis. But the firm left its annual forecast unchanged, citing uncertainties ahead. Now, the company, or the world's top-selling automaker, has bounced back quicker than its competitors from the impact of COVID-19 lockdowns, reclaiming the top spot for sales last year. For the three months to June, Toyota logged an 897.8 billion yen, or an equivalent of $8.2 billion net profit, a record for the first quarter and up from 158.8 billion yen in the same period last year. Sales surged to 72.5% to 7.9 trillion yen. Last week, Toyota said the group grew global sales hit a record high for the six months to June, thanks to healthy demand for its Highlander and Camry models in the United States and Corolla and Lexus brands in China. In Latvia's capital, a pasta order comes in and a robotic arm springs into action at the uh, Robo Eats Eatery. Within five minutes, a piping hot plate is ready. Robo Eats aims to revolutionize the fast food industry with its innovative use of technology. Take a look. <laughs> Uh, we see uh, this assistant replaces at least three people uh, in, in the best uh, scenario five workers in the kitchen by replacing these people who you, uh, without changing anything else you are uh, saving uh, uh, at least 200,000 euro per year
So it took us around, uh, let's say, uh, three years to come to, the f to, to what we have now. Uh, and uh, the machine, uh, uh, the current version of our system, is actually completely autonomous. It can cook, serve, uh, take orders, uh, wash itself. So basically, it's a completely autonomous robotic kitchen. system replaces at least three people. Uh, in, in the best uh, scenario, five workers in the kitchen. By replacing these people who you, uh, without changing anything else, you are uh, saving uh, uh, at least 200,000 euro per year. negaidīju, ka pirmkārt tā tāksta puts var garšot tik labi, un ka robota veidu, nu, robota veidu un spāsta puts var garšot labi. Un būtībā, manuprāt, tā ir ļoti laikmetam atbilstoša ideja, nu, Covid apstākļos un tam līdzīgi, manuprāt, tā ir gan drošāk, ja robots gatavo maltīti, nevis vairāki darbinieki, gan arī, nu, interesantāk. Moving up and down through the aisles of Northeast America's Stop and Shop supermarket is an autonomous robot named Marty. In these stores, he has one job, to inspect the floor and look for hazards and spills. Marty has different sensors and cameras that are focused uh, exclusively on the floor and through that technology Marty can identify the hazard uh, up from 40 feet away from the hazard. So he will stop at the spill and you know say if it's an aisle three, um, he will pay the, the PA system clean up an aisle three so an associate knows then to go over uh, to aisle three. Marty will be stopped and flashing, um, hence identifying some sort of hazard on the ground. So at that point, someone has to clean up the spill, um, take care of it, and then there's a button we hit on Marty, and after we hit that button, he takes a picture and moves on with his route. responses has been great. Uh, there's a Marty fan club. The kids love Marty. They'll come to the store. Uh, they'll tell their parents they want to come and, uh, and see Marty. Community response has been really great. I was, I was very surprised. I was like, whoa, Stop and Shop has this? And the more I just see him around, the more I got used to him. So it's just more of a getting used to thing. And now to the action in the uh, Tokyo Olympics. All 12 members of the Greek artistic swimming team are in isolation after five of them tested positive for coronavirus in the first cluster detected at the Games, according to Olympic officials today. Now the team have withdrawn from remaining competition and the seven members who have so far tested negative have agreed to move to a facility for close contacts of positive cases, according to Tokyo 2020 spokesman Masa Takaya. None of those who tested positive so far require hospital care, according to Mr. Takaya. The team did not participate in the duet competition on Tuesday and have now withdrawn from the team competition, which will start later this week. And so far, Tokyo 2020 has reported 
322 positive virus cases among its stakeholders, including athletes, officials, and media. Most of the positive cases have been among Japanese residents working as employees or contractors. In other Olympic news, Japan's Sakura Yosozumi won the women's sport competition to maintain the host strange stranglehold on Olympic skateboarding on Wednesday and stop. Kokona Hiraki and Sai Brown becoming the game's youngest ever gold medalist. Now the 19-year-old opened the final with a following or flowing run featuring two 540s with her 60.09 points. Proving enough for victory ahead of teammate Hiraki, 12, and Brown, 13. Despite missing the title, Hiraki, who scored a 59.04, achieved the rare feat of winning an Olympic medal before her 13th birthday, the first to do so since French rower Noelle van der Nott in 1936. And Sydney McLaughlin of the United States matched her own world record as she stormed to victory in the Olympic women's 400-meter hurdles final today. Now, McLaughlin powered home in 51.46 seconds with world champion and 2016 Olympic gold medalist Delilah Mohammed claiming silver in 51.58. Femke Ball of the Netherlands took bronze in 52.03. The 21-year-old McLaughlin's blistering time bettered her world record set at the U.S. trials in Oregon in June when she ran 51.90 seconds. And Brazil's Marcela Anacunha said she had to be cold mentally to see off the challenge of defending champion Sharon Van Ruwendal on her way to Olympic gold in the women's 10-kilometer marathon swim on Wednesday. Shin Kunha won by less than a second from a fast-surging Van Ruwendal in their early morning duel in Tokyo, timing 1 hour 59 minutes, 30.8 seconds to 1.59, 31.7 for the Dutch swimmer. Karina Lee took the bronze medal for Australia. Kunha, 29, finished 10th in the event at the Rio Olympics and 5th at the Beijing Games in 2008. The Brazilian said she had arrived in Japan desperate to win a gold. And Italy broke their own world record to win Olympic gold in the men's team pursuit today, beating world champions Denmark in a thrilling final at the Izu Velodrome. Take a look. The Italians shaded a neck-and-neck -neck battle on the track. Their blistering time of 3 minutes, 42.032 seconds, just enough to hold off Denmark, who crossed the line in 3 minutes, 42.198 seconds. Led by the 25-year-old Filippo Ganna, Italy's quartet roared with delight after powering to victory, circling around the arena in front of an enthralled crowd of around 1,000 fans and Shizuoka. Now local carriers Philippine Airlines or PAL and Air Asia Philippines announced Tuesday they will give free flights to Olympic silver medalist Nesty Patesho. At least 60,000 PAL miles per year for life and five years of unlimited flights across the Air Asia network await the first Filipino boxer to win an Olympic medal. The 60,000 miles is equivalent to four round-trip domestic flights or two round-trip regional flights or one round-trip flight to Australia or the Middle East or Honolulu. Earlier, PAL and Air Asia Philippines awarded Olympic gold medalist Adeline Diaz with 80,000 miles and lifetime unlimited flights, respectively. In a statement, Air Asia Philippines spokesperson Steve Dailisan said, the airline hopes that the free flights would motivate the athletes to always go all the way for the gold and to never stop dreaming big. The low-cost carrier also announced that it will give two years of unlimited flights to an Olympic bronze medalist. Three round-trip, non-transferable domestic flights will also be given to all Filipino athletes who competed in the Tokyo Olympics. 
Earlier, budget carrier Cebu Pacific also announced the awarding of 25 free flights to all Filipino athletes who joined the competition. The free flights can be used for any of Cebu Pacific's domestic or short haul destinations. And Ernest John Obiena kissed his hopes for a medal goodbye after failing to clear the bar at 5.8 meters thrice in the men's pole vault finals at the Tokyo National Stadium. Now, uh, Obiena's personal best and Philippine record stands at 5.87, way above the 5.8 he was trying to clear. After what looked like a foul attempt on his third try, Obiena approached the official stable to protest the apparent disparity between the display clock and the official clock located near their table. Realizing the mistake, officials gave Obiena another opportunity, but the Philippines' top pole vaulter, his momentum derailed by the error, again failed to leap over the cliff. As highly anticipated, Mondo Duplantis of Sweden won the gold after beating Chris Nilsson of the United States. And again, one of the greatest joys of traveling is the memories that you keep. And we're following EBC's Malu Francisco's journey through her pictures to give us a glimpse of people, places, and their culture. While we're dealing with a harsh COVID-19 situation, although we're not able to travel, we can always let our mind and eyes do the traveling for us. By looking at our photographs and video clips that help us revisit and re-experience the joy of traveling. Not only that, but to find and appreciate the informative and educational values that we oftentimes fail to notice when we're traveling to a place, especially as a first timer. Well, I've just thought that we all need to see and hear different sights and sounds in the midst of daily dosage of information about the pandemic, further compounded by the reports of calamities, floods, earthquakes, accidents made by human errors and the like. We need to take a break from the daily and every hour reports and discussions of the pandemic. We need to do it. Medical practitioners do recommend that we should avoid excessive exposure to the news, which could lead to negative effects on our emotional and mental health. One of the most effective ways, if I may share, that helped me find balance during the pandemic, at the same time, strictly following the restrictions, I go through my folders of travel pictures, video clips, and notes. And every time I sift through my documentation of all these visits, it's a time of renewed energy and peace of mind. These are moments of positive and productive modes. I am packed with flashes of beautiful landscapes, fantastic weather, interesting people, delicious food, and the history or the story that strings all the sad elements of my city visits together, which makes my entire travel a meaningful one. In the Netherlands, Marilu Francisco will live in interesting times. Uh, One of my favorite storytellers. Thank you so much, Lou. <laughs> That's true. And I miss having coffee with you, CJ. <laughs> well, me too. But uh, we'll just have to do with uh, what we can do in this uh, time. True. And uh, that's it for tonight's broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Please do take care wherever you are. I'm CJ Hero. Join us again tomorrow. And at the end of the day, there remains so much more to be grateful for. We'll see you back tomorrow. I'm Alma Angeles, and we Me live there. in Me interesting there. times. This program is supported by Protect Plus Gold.
A broad spectrum disinfectant kills 99.5% of the disease causing germs and works in 10 minutes.